Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. And in this video in the Life Explained series, I'm going to talk about earthbound spirits, also called lost souls, who can possess human beings and can make their lives miserable. I've talked about them already in my video on death and dying part two, but today I'm going to go into this subject a little bit deeper. And if you have never heard about this, you are going to hear some very interesting information. Spirit possession is as old as mankind. In all cultures, we find descriptions and stories of spirit possessions, and most famously the many references in the Bible of Jesus helping people by driving out unclean spirits. I think there are over two dozen references. Who are these possessive souls and why are they so dangerous? The majority of them are people who have died a physical death and cannot understand or accept that they have died a physical death and that they are now in a spiritual body. Death is a very simple transition from the physical world into the spiritual world. It's just like going from one room into another room or traveling from one country to another country. And when we die, we will continue living, but not in a physical body, but in a spiritual body. And this has nothing to do with religious beliefs. This is how Mother Nature has been operating for millions of years. However, there are people who are totally convinced that when they die, there is this total extinction. There is no such thing like afterlife. And when these people die, they simply cannot accept the fact that they have died a physical death and that they are still alive. It doesn't fit their belief system. And the same applies to very orthodox or religious dogmatic belief uh, who cannot accept the reality of death. You see, we perceive our reality according to our beliefs. These souls with these strong beliefs are totally confused when they die and we call them lost souls. And they are not open to any teachings or any guidance by light beings who are usually there to welcome them. Let me illustrate this with a typical example. Let's say we have here a young man who likes to drink and party. He, being young and thinking himself as indestructible, of course, does not think about death or even beliefs in life after death. Young people usually don't do that. Now he has taken a few drinks after work and on his way home he boom crashes his car. He dies instantly and his soul is projected out of his body. He now has a spiritual body that feels as real to him as his old physical body. His mental and emotional faculties are also very much unchanged. And as he does not believe that life exists after the physical death, he thinks he is just lucky to have survived the crash. At the moment of his physical death, light beings from the spiritual world as well as maybe some loved ones who have died before arrive to greet and guide him to the spiritual worlds. But even if he sees them, he will ignore them or run away from them because they do not fit into his belief system. He may think they are just ghosts. But the car crash may have given him a little shock and his first thought is I need another drink. This thought alone is enough to bring him to the nearest bar or drinking spot. Initially he will be surprised or, and maybe even angry that everybody seems to ignore him because he is invisible to them. But he soon figures out that he can satisfy his alcohol addiction via another human with similar weakness or addiction, meaning a similar soul vibration. This is in complete accordance with the law like attracts like. And here we have such a person sitting at the bar. This earthbound soul now lurches onto his guest and enters his aura and his body and then enjoys his drink through him. He now has become a possessing soul. Writers have romanticized such souls as vampires, but there is nothing romantic about vampires. Uh, quite contrary. They are dangerous and often malicious. And from now on, this lost soul will possess, influence and control this human being via thoughts. This lost soul will now keep projecting thoughts and desires of drinking, eating or drugs or watching more porn or whatever it is that turns the possessing soul on. And the human being is convinced that these are his own thoughts, but they are not. They are from the possessing soul. And here is another devastating fact. It is rare for a person to be influenced or possessed by only one lost soul. Other lost souls who share the addiction will attach themselves to and very soon there are many more. Like bunches of grapes are they hanging on this one mortal being and follow him around wherever he goes and influence him like a puppet. 
they are like sponges draining the energy of their host. Spirits don't just enter because of their addiction, but also sometimes for revenge and they can even drive their victim to suicide and in some cases to murder. But there has to be some kind of corresponding emotional pattern in the host to make that happen. Besides bars or places of addictions, another place where souls can easily enter another human body is a hospital. Here again, we are many souls that have recently died but are not willing to accept their new situation. They are roaming around the hospital and find another patient or a visitor with similar vibration and slip into their aura and body where they now continue living through them. Talking about hospitals, another danger of spirit transplants happens during organ transplants. I've made a special short video about that topic. These lost spirits are also known to enter babies or small children. And in such cases, it is the similar vibrating emotional imbalance of one of the parents of the child or baby that attracts such a vagabonding soul. And besides hospitals, graveyards, funeral homes, prisons and mental institutions, there is one other easy entry for such souls. And that are people who are consciously inviting spirits to speak or express themselves through them. And I'm speaking of seances, Ouija boards, planchettes, automatic writings, channelings and so on. All these activities invite souls, but there is no guarantee that only good or highly evolved souls will be attracted. No, lost souls and even devious souls love these invitations too and are happy to move in and stay with anybody who invites them. Now let us look at some symptoms or effects that may indicate the possibility of a possessive spirit. It is very often a sudden change of character or well-being or an erratic and impulsive behavior like extreme tiredness, exhaustion and depression. Of course, they can have many causes, but very often possessing spirits are draining the energy of the hosts. Remember, they are the classic vampires. Sudden severe mental problems. These lost spirits are master in manipulating and influencing the mind of the host. Think of cases of schizophrenia or the violent anger outbursts in mental homes or prisons. Drug and alcohol addictions. These are some of the most devastating symptoms of spirit possession. This also can include smoking addictions. Weight and obesity problems. These spirits bring their craving with them and make sure that any attempts to diet will be doomed. Relationship problems. No wonder because couples are suddenly having a menage a trois without their knowledge or consent and this causes problems. Sexual problems. Sexual confusion and addictions can be a result of possessing spirits. If a male spirit enters a woman or the other way around, we are having some major problems, not only in the bedroom. In some cases it can lead to homosexuality, but very often transvestites or transgenders can be caused by a powerful possessing spirit of the opposite sex. Let me be clear, not for one moment do I wish to imply that these conditions are always caused by possessive spirits. Far from it. But in her book, The Unquiet Dead, Dr. Edith Fiore claims that 70% of her patients actually had a possessing spirit. Anybody who is living in a vibratory similar world of thoughts, feelings, emotions and desires as these possessing spirits can become their victim. And one way of getting rid of them is to love and honor oneself and work oneself through all the addictions and the emotional injuries. But for many it is too late to have been a puppet of these invaders for a long time. There are other techniques for them to free and dislodge these possessing spirits. And for that I would like to refer to the many books written by medical doctors and experts in this field. For instance, the book The Unquiet Dead by Dr. Edith Fiore gives clear instructions of how to dislodge or depossess a spirit. The same can be found in other important books written by medical doctors on this subject and here are some of them. Freeing Captives by Dr. Louise Island Frey, MD. Healing Lost Souls by Dr. William Baldwin. Entity Possessions by Dr. Samuel Sagan, MD. And the all-time classic 30 Years Among the Dead by Dr. Carl Wickland, MD. 
And I also like to mention the book Astral Horror, written by Gabriele. All these books confirm that spirit possession is a spiritual phenomenon which is fully backed by medical research and reports. And therefore I recommend these books to anybody who wants to know more about it. If you know anybody who may benefit from knowing about this video, please share it with them. It has been an honor and pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.